Welcome to Headline Simsbury. I'm Karen Hanville. On April 10th, the Board of Finance held a public hearing at the Simsbury High School Amphitheater on the $91 million budget proposal for the 2014-15 fiscal year. After presentations by the Board of Education and Board of Selectmen, it was the public's turn. Only seven people spoke on the budget, including regular critics Joan Coe and Robert Kalishman. But most speakers supported this year's budget, including a longtime critic of previous budgets, Dr. Michael Rinaldi. I've been a resident for 40 years. This is the first year since 2007-8 that I can support the town's budget, support both the uh, selectman's budget and the uh, education budget. I also want to echo Mrs. Milliard's comments to the Board of Finance. I think they were totally appropriate. And I expect this year no tax increase. And it would be nice to put a heading in the current saying that Simsbury reduced taxes. Even if we did it by one-tenth or a five-hundredth of a mil. <laughs> The public gets a chance to vote on the budget on May 6th at the town referendum. Voting will be held at Henry James Memorial School. You can see the whole Board of Finance public hearing on the SETV website, simsburytv.org, where you can also find the schedule of when it will re-air on Comcast Channel 96. Have you ever considered solar power for your home but thought it was prohibitively expensive? As part of a state campaign to increase solar power called Solarize Connecticut, Simsbury residents will be able to take part in a program designed to make going solar easy and affordable. The first step in the process is a workshop on Tuesday, April 29th at Eno Memorial Hall at 7 p.m. There you can learn all about the program which reduces the cost to homeowners significantly through state rebates, of substantial federal tax credit and long-term financing. SeaTech Solar has been selected as the official installer of Solarize Simsbury. If you missed the meeting, you can still get lots of information about the program online by searching Solarize Connecticut Simsbury. To get a free solar assessment, you can contact SeaTech Solar at their website or by calling 888-527-6527. The program discounts are only being offered for 20 weeks and contracts must be signed by September 23, 2014. You may have noticed that for the past six or seven months, there has been a new buzzword in town, innovation. A lot of talk about innovation has taken place at the Simsbury Public Library where they created a group of town citizens to focus on innovation. Its purpose, to create and sustain an environment in town conducive to innovation. After a lot of discussion, the library group decided that it would create something they are calling an innovator's workshop with a 3D printing lab as a key element. In many ways, we borrowed from some other libraries. Okay. There, are, there are probably 15 to 20 libraries across the country who are ahead of us in this regard. So we looked around to see what other libraries were doing. And we knew that we wanted to do uh, programs that were not just technologically oriented, but they were also artistic. So it covered both the technology and the artist side. And we saw in a number of these libraries that they had used a 3D printer as sort of the, the jumping off point to be able to get people involved. And when I say people, some of the, one of the attractions of this is that uh, this 3D printing lab and other libraries have attracted populations and demographics that don't ordinarily come to the library. So for example, um, early teens. Kids come to the library when they're in high school and they've got to do papers. But when they're 10, 11, 12, 13, you know, what does the library have to offer? Well, with the 3D printer and all the programs we'll have there, we'll have a lot to offer. 
If you want to see the new 3D printer, the kickoff for this new program and the 3D printer will be Saturday, April 26th at the library. A ribbon cutting will be held at 10 a.m., which will be followed by activities all over the library, including something called a technology petting zoo. The robotics team from the Simsbury High School will be demonstrating their work. The science fair from Squadron and Terrafield Schools will also be on display. Recently, the new 3D printer and scanner were opened. In the following video, Susan Ray, the head of adult services at the library, shows Bud Kelly, husband of the late Eunice Kelly, the new equipment. The Kelly family made a significant donation in Eunice's name to acquire the 3D printer. Um, just to give you an example, what the 3D digitizer can do is um, say I had lost this chess piece mm -hmm. and I needed it for my set over there. I could take the exact same piece of black and I would put it on the digitizer here. And what this does is it works as a turnstile, sort of like a record player. Okay. And it goes to a computer, which I don't have here right now, but we'll have a laptop here attached to both machines. And what I'll do is it'll rotate around, it'll scan on the right, then it'll scan on the left, and this is your camera here. And it's taking a picture of this and creating a 3D object. Mm -hmm. I can then take the object that I scan, put it, the program into the printer here, because this is a USB board, <laughs> run the printer, and then within an hour or so, I would have a new white chess piece. Okay. That's, that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I know. It's very easy to use. You just push the button, turn it on, and it heats up, and then it starts printing your project. What it does is it melts down the plastic filament, and then it extrudes onto this plate here, and it builds the object from the ground up. So you're actually building from the bottom up, sort of like if you were building Legos, you would build up. Very easy, you just pop it in like a sewing machine spool of thread, you run it through the tube here, it goes into a heating unit, and then it melts it and puts it in. In the meantime, the library is still looking for volunteers to learn how to operate and staff the 3D printer. Stop by the reference desk, call them at 658-7663, or on their website at simsburylibrary.info. Innovation is also on the minds of the folks at the Simsbury Historical Society, where there is a lot of new energy. They have been working hard all winter on a whole new group of exhibits. Among other things, they've created a woodworking exhibit and using things that have been donated to the Historical Society over the years. They have created an exhibit which Joe Buddha recently told SCTV they are calling Pedal Power. We have some wonderful bikes that were uh, right here from Simsbury uh, that were owned by a family in Simsbury that we have on display. And then we move into other bikes, historically looking at the three speed, the coaster uh, brake type bike, the ones that we used to ride a lot of these, the 10 speed that came out so popular in the 60s and 70s. We, we look at those bikes. Then we have a separate um, stall that's dealing with present and future bikes. And we're really working closely with the uh, Simsbury free bikes in that area, the, uh, the bike seller and others. Uh, Steve Mitchell was over just the other day. He was helping us film absolutely with Dave, uh, a segment in, in our barn. And that to look at all of the synergies that we have around bicycles and then putting that into, integrating that into the exhibit there. The Simsbury Historical Society has a grand opening planned for its new exhibits the weekend of May 17th and 18th. Saturday features an event from 10 to 4 called The Fabric of Time, which will include an exhibition of wheels, looms, and textiles from the Society's collection. But the star of the day is Hartford's own Ed Janeta Miller, an extraordinary fiber artist, quilter, teacher, curator, and lecturer, and one of the most creative and colorful improvisational quilt makers in the U.S. Ed Janeta Miller is scheduled to speak at 11 a.m. Seating is limited to 50 people, so reserve your seat by calling 860-217-3686. The beauty of Simsbury has inspired the large community of artists who make this town their home. 
14 of those artists are once again sharing their studios with the public the weekend of May 3rd and 4th during their fifth annual Open Studios event. To give you a taste of what to expect, SETV volunteer Althea Graney has put together a review of some of what you will see when you visit their studios. <music> The artist's work will be displayed at the Simsbury Historical Society's Ellsworth Center during the Open Studio event, where you can also find maps to help you find the studio locations. They will be open from 10 to 4 both days. One of the artists participating in the Open Studios event is Catherine Elliott, who has made a special donation to support Simsbury Celebrates, the town-wide post-Thanksgiving holiday festival. Linda Johnson has more details. Hello, my name is Linda Johnson, and I'm here to tell you that the Simsbury Celebrates Volunteer Planning Committee will host two fundraisers this spring. The first will be held on Wednesday, May 7th, at McLadden's Irish Public House in Simsbury for a meet and greet with highly acclaimed and international artist, Catherine M. Elliott. The committee invites you to purchase your own Catherine M. Elliott 13 by 17, 16 by 20 with border, limited edition, signed, numbered, and sleeved glissé print depicting the beautiful Farmington River and Talcott Mountain titled Celebrate Our View. Prints will be available at the event by cash or check only for $40. Catherine is a lifelong resident of Simsbury and will be in attendance to greet attendees and discuss the completed work. This meet and greet evening will be held from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. and a cash bar will be available. This painting was created especially for Simsbury Celebrates and is printed on pigmented inks on archival paper by local framer Rich Wagner of Imagine It Framed. Miss Elliott and the committee worked together to select a scene. Everyone agreed the main goal was to create a painting that represents Simsbury. Miss Elliott was immediately open to the challenge and very happy to support Simsbury Celebrates. Recently, Miss Elliott worked with actress Meryl Streep and the Connecticut Farmland Trust to create a painting for their fundraiser. Prints may be reserved prior to the May 7th event using a credit card by calling 860-658-3836. 
All prepaid signed and numbered prints will be available for pickup at the May 7th event. Details about the May 7th limited edition print sale are available at SimsburyCelebrates.com, on the Simsbury Celebrates Facebook page, and on the artist's website, CatherineMElliott.com. The Second Chance Shop of Simsbury is loaded with spring and summer gently used clothing for the entire family, and they're having their 50% off sale. Everything in the store is 50% off on May 9th and 10th. In-season donations are also being accepted. The Second Chance Shop is located at 12 Station Street and is open Monday through Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. The Friends of the Simsbury Library's annual author lunch is coming up on May 7th. It features best-selling author Andre Debuse III, who returns this year to the Hot Meadow Country Club to talk about his new book, Dirty Love, which contains four linked short stories about love and betrayal. The New York Times book review called Staggeringly Good. The luncheon costs $28. The library friends ask that you RSVP to the library before April 30th. The Simsbury Historical Society has begun its spring concert series. The Alturas Duo, which features two musicians playing South American and classical music on the viola, charango, and guitar, will perform at the Meeting House on Saturday, May 10th at 7 p.m. The event is free, but donations are suggested. The Talcott Mountain Music Festival tickets are on sale for all Hartford Symphony summer concerts. The season kicks off June 27th with Mozart, followed by the annual Celebrate America concert, complete with fireworks on Thursday, July 3rd, Broadway Rocks on Friday, July 11th, the Music of the Who on Friday, July 18th, and finally, a musical tribute to Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong on Friday, July 25th. All concerts begin at 7.30 p.m. Grass passes and table seats can be ordered by calling the Hartford Symphony Orchestra box office at 860-244-2999. May is National Bike Month, and Patty Jacobus is here with more information. May is National Bike Month, and Simsbury, Connecticut's first bike-friendly community, will be celebrating with rides, special events for bike commuters, families, and bike advocates. Join us beginning on May 1st for the Selectman's Ride. Everyone is welcome to join Mary Glassman and the Board of Selectmen at Town Hall at 5 p.m. for a leisurely five-mile ride through Simsbury. Simsbury Free Bike begins its fourth season and all the bikes are out. Our town bike share has grown into a regional bike share program that now offers bikes in six towns. To see another part of the trail, borrow a bike in Farmington, Granby, Avon, or Canton. A trail ride can be a great family adventure either north or south of Simsbury. During Bike Week, May 12th through the 16th, many Simsbury elementary schools will be walking and riding bikes to school. We encourage you to walk with your children and enjoy the event as a family. Looking for a great family bike ride? The Farmington Valley Trails Council will host a 30-mile family bike ride on May 17th. After your ride, stop by the Redstone Pub for a guest bartender event that will support Simsbury Free Bike. Simsbury's first adventure race is scheduled for Sunday, May 18th. The Tri-Simsbury River to Ridge Run Bike Paddle Triathlon will take athletes through some of the most beautiful areas of Simsbury. The course utilizes the Farmington River, Simsbury's Roads and Bike Trail, and Penwood State Park. To register for the event, visit trysimsbury.com or visit us on Facebook at Tri Simsbury. This is also an ideal spectator event that will end at the Meadows Performing Arts Center with music, prizes, and food. We'll be greeting bike commuters at 6.30 a.m. on Iron Horse Boulevard on Friday, May 16th for Bike to Work Day. If you're not into getting up quite that early for a bike ride, join us at the Redstone Pub that evening at 5 p.m. to celebrate Bike Month. 
All Bike Month events are listed on our advocacy Facebook page at Simsbury Free Bike. Thanks to all of our Simsbury businesses that keep our bikes rolling, support our many biking events, and understand the value of becoming a bike-friendly community. In the meantime, Simsbury High School has jumped on the bicycle bandwagon. At the beginning of April, the Connecticut Cycling Advancement Team came to the high school cafeteria to introduce students to the sport of cycling. Invited by the new Simsbury High School Cycling Club, the Advancement Team brought two stationary bikes so students could challenge their friends to simulated computer races. By the end of lunch, the new high school bike club had grown from four to 15 members. It's once again time for spring cleaning, but make sure when you go to clean out your garage, you don't throw out any hazardous waste items into the garbage. Instead, wait for the hazardous waste collection date on Saturday, June 14th at the Simsbury Public Works facility at 66 Town Forest Road, just off Strattonbrook. That's the time to get rid of your fluorescent and compact light bulbs, batteries, anything containing mercury, lawn care chemicals, household cleaners, aerosol cans, ammonia, and chemicals from your garage or workshop. For more detailed information on what hazardous waste will be accepted, you can go to the Simsbury Public Works site on the town's website, or you can call Public Works at 658-3222. Simsbury offers a rabies vaccination clinic every year, and May 3rd is the date this season from 10 a.m. to noon. You can bring your cat or dog on a leash or crated to the Weetog Fire Station for their vaccination. Cost is $20 cash per animal. For more information, you can contact Simsbury's Animal Control Officer, Mark Rudowitz, at 860-658. 3110. If you like to grow your own vegetables or flowers but have a shady property or live in a condo or apartment, the Simsbury Parks and Recreation Department has garden plots available. Small plots of 600 square feet are $25 and larger plots of 1,350 square feet are $50 for the season. You can also choose an organic plot. Sign up for a rental on the Simsbury Rec Department site, simsburyrec.com. The Simsbury Community Gardens are located on Sand Hill Road behind Ethel Walker School. A Mother's Day plant sale to benefit the Multiple Sclerosis Society will be held Saturday, May 10th at the Ryan Family Farm located at 64 Terry's Plain Road you can make selections from hanging baskets, potted plants, and many annuals. The sale runs from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and you'll receive a free packet of seeds with your purchase or donation. Also on May 10th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., the Gardeners of Simsbury is holding its plant sale of perennials and annuals, including members' donations from their own gardens at the Boy Scout Hall on Hot Meadow Street, this is their sole fundraiser. And the Garden Club of Simsbury plant sale will be on Saturday, May 17th at the Simsbury Farms ice skating rink from 9 to 1 with all proceeds going to funding scholarships. That's it for headlines today. The SETV staff and board of directors would like to thank all of you who have given us financial support to help us keep our town residents informed. Remember, SCTV is your station, and if you would like to volunteer or produce programming, sign up for free training by visiting us in the lower level of Eno Memorial Hall, calling us at 860-658-1720, or emailing us at simtv at yahoo.com. Join our team of volunteers. We would love to have you. There's lots of opportunities to help. And did you know that Simsbury Community Television actually has three channels? On AT&T UVerse, they're all available on channel 99. On Comcast, channel 95 is the educational channel, 96 is the government channel, 
And don't forget about this channel, Comcast Channel 5, tucked way down in the channel lineup with all the other non-HD channels. Channel 5 is the public channel where you will find vibrant programming by and about town residents and town activities. That is where you will find an interview with Simsbury resident and NBC Connecticut weatherman, Bob Maxson. He stopped by SCTV recently to record an interview with Dominique Avery for a show called Can We Talk, which will air in May. He also recorded a station promo, Thank You, Bob. Thank you for joining us. I'm Karen Hanville. You're watching SCTV, your town, your schools, and your government. All right, what, it is, what is it that we're doing here? Geez, you brought the poster. You know, we're here to uh, encourage people to participate in this year's Memorial Day Parade on Monday, May 26th. And uh, we'd love to have as many people participate as possible. And there are two parades, right? Simsbury is unique. I think it may be the only town in the state that has two parades, one in Terrafil in the morning and Simsbury in the afternoon. Ah. Well, I could probably crutch my way up the hill in Terraville for that service, but uh, I, th I think I, I might prefer to ride in the Swimsbury Parade. Uh, what do you have to help me in that regard? Because I certainly want to participate. Uh, Memorial Day is, after all, a, a time to pay tribute to those who went bef before us, and I wouldn't want to miss it. Well, uh, what we have is, uh, for those people who can't walk, we provide uh, vintage cars for them to ride in, and we'll certainly be doing that this year. We obviously need to know who um, is going to need a ride so that we can provide the correct number of cars. So at the bottom of the poster, there's our names and our phone numbers, and we can be called. Plus, the information will be posted in the local media and magazines, uh, so if you'll keep those in mind, uh, you'll have all the details that you need. Okay, and you are who? My name's Ray Jennings, and uh, my name and phone number are at the bottom of the poster. And you are Hap Poole, and your name and number are at the bottom of the poster, and we are available to answer any questions that folks might have. Well, I have quite a few questions about the Memorial Day parades and the wonderful uh, service that's held in front of Eno afterward. I remember that very well. Uh, uh, I have so many questions, so how will those be answered? Those can be answered uh, in the media as well. People can look in the newspapers and magazines, and um, if they need to, they can call either one of us, and we'll be up to date on what information they might need. And I hope everyone will come to the ceremony that occurs after the parade. It's short, but it's very meaningful uh, for those people who went before us, and especially the 104 people who from Simsbury were killed in action and buried in town. Sounds great. I hope we got a great turnout. Have, a, have the usual sunny day for, for May. Uh, absolutely, we hope that's true. 